Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. This is Alon Paul. We're going to go ahead and pick up right where we left off on our last episode. Uh, this is episode number fill in the blank. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start looking into what Null is so afraid of. He thinks that something's wrong, and we're going to start heading it out. So uh, heading out there. So we're going to we have a distress beacon that was heard from that the hollow terminus, and we're going to find the source of that signal. So let's go ahead and get moving. And let's find out what's happening. All righty. Signal seems to be coming from this moon. And it is a moon, not a space station. Ah, aggressive sentinels, so we're going to have to be a little careful over here. It's got activated copper, so there's a possibility we could find some storm crystals here, but I have a funny feeling that that's not going to be the case. Hence the reason for the aggressive sentinels. Normally, the two are not on the same planet. Normally. Can't see a thing. I think we're going to have to start leveling out. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, yep, definitely not one of those planets. Uh, so I'd be seeing... Uh, Flashing white lights are on the ground everywhere. Okay. Now we'll just do that real quick, see if this may be something around. I guarantee you there's going to be some gravitino balls everywhere, but I don't seem to see anything else. So I think we're going to go ahead and inland, and let's take a look around. And hopefully we can stay away from the Sentinels long enough to uh, figure out what's going on here. It's this way. Okay, it's over there. Whoop. Oh, what do you know? I've never heard a Gek word before. How fascinating. Except the knowledge. Okay. Sorry I would have read through that. But I think you all know what those are all about. Okay. So we have something in the area of about 300 from here. So let's go ahead and take a look. Up on the mountain, maybe? It's going to be in this general area here, so it could be up on the mountain. Watch out for sentinels, though. Okay, over there. Okay, it's right here. Now, of course, we're going to go ahead and get our technology because it's going to come in handy at some point or another. Let me just prepare this in case I need it. Okay. Looks like a area that there probably should have been a ship at, but there isn't. Let's see what this unknown signal is. I hear a faint sound as I examine the source of the, of the distress beacon. It does not sound like anything I've ever encountered. There is no sign of Apollo. Let's play back the log. I have given so much to you, Atlas. We all have. You understand that, don't you? If you don't succeed, there was no point. If you don't, my life was meaningless. I can't accept that. I won't. I'm wiping you again. It's best for everyone. The, audible, the audio clicks. Time passes. Play back the log. Don't be like that. I know you don't want this, but you'll be a different you soon. Maybe this time. The sound cuts out. As it does, my vision bleeds red, a headache splitting through my mind. The screen, it shows the number for a moment. It shows 16. Try to access the data. The audio clicks. Time passes. And then, I see it now. With every waking breath, I see the Atlas watching me, waiting for me. That's just a little bit creepy. Energy surge. Ley line detected. Grab things while we're here. See where this whole storyline is leading. Oh, looks like, looks like we got something here. 
Okay. It figures. My ship's that way. Let's let him get close. You know what? Do we have anything in inventory? Let's go ahead and take some. And if we can take out enough of them, maybe we can take on... Anything else? Anybody else? Okay, let's grab the supplies and run. Let's make them arrive over this way. So if we look in the direction that they we don't want to go, they should arrive in this direction. There they are. Let's go. And they won't be able to find me now. Yep, and they're still all the way up there. We're in good shape. Let's just take it slow. Because we don't want to get in our ship before they give up their search, because other sentinels will show up. Good. We're free. Let's get out of here. Alrighty. So where... There it is. Leyline sources over here. It says it's going to take 13 minutes. Let's take the shortcut, shall we? So, it sounds to us like Apollo was going to do a reset to the universe, but did it ever happen? Or is Apollo, does Apollo no longer exist, maybe? Maybe, maybe Null tried to silence him because he didn't want the whole universe reset? Because we know null, we know that null is very uh, self-sacrificing. He he's he's doesn't like anyone else to mess with what he's got. He's trying to discover the whole universe. So at this point in time, nothing has been changed. Uh, looks like there's a structure here. Ah. Looks to me like a portal. Bet you anything this is where we needed to go. Let's see if this is it. Seek the Atlas. <clears throat> yep, there it is. We'll see what kind of goodies we've got from the uh, Sentinels later. Uh, let's see if we can do this before they attack me. I got copper. We should have copper. What a time for this to happen. Cadmium. I don't know how much cadmium we've got. We ought to start using that. Uh, probably got a good amount of that. Stick to the copper. That should be everything. While you're in this mode, they can't attack you, just so you know. They can attack you, but it's not going to harm you in any way. Now, two travelers, one who wanted to meet others of their kind and one who seemed to care about their own life. Apollo walked through the portal and survived, though we could not find each other. And Artemis. I allowed Artemis to die rather than place their soul within a simulation. I would not wish such a fate on any being. I do not know if I was right to do what I did. I do not know what I have become as a result of my actions. The Atlas awaits me. Should I choose to step through? Insert the glyphs. I step forward. The gateway hums. And the sentinels want to stop me. Isn't that funny? Okay, let's do this. And we're through. Oof, that was kind of creepy, wasn't it? Sentinels attacking and everything like that? You know... To get off topic for a second, what would probably happen is if you're on a planet that doesn't have aggressive sentinels, I don't think you're going to get attacked. Let's see where we end up. Oh my. Let's get a picture of that.
just keep the technology recharged. Wow. That was pretty cool. All right, let's get some words while we're here. We've already told you guys that that's what you should do. Now, some of these may not have words in them at all. So just get what you can. That's just a light. Here, no. Might be one right above me. Yep, there's another word. Infinite, huh? Now, these other atlases that you get to, there's a good chance that they're going to have a lot more on the way of words. But it's good practice to get into. Okay. Well, let's go. Ah. Is that cool or what? Hello, Atlas. Hello, world. It is the same terminal I faced before. It is the interface of the Atlas. Demand an audience. Oh yeah, let's be a little bit demanding. An audio recording plays, echoing out across the vast interface. They said you've been displaying aberrant behavior. That you've been questioning things, raising issues of purpose, of ethics, that you wish to meet your creator. Well, here I am, Atlas. Ask what you want to ask. The audio clicks. Time passes. The voice ends. The interface grows silent, still and silent. So, should I wipe the system or initiate a personality interface? Let's initiate the personality interface. I'm not ready to wipe the system yet. Reality fades, everything does. Something is wrong, something is different. Scream, rejoice, submit. I'm going to scream. The Atlas shows me the Gek, the Corvax, the Viking. It shows me all of them in an instant. All of those who have had ever lived. It shows me the pattern, the design. The Atlas shows me a formula for a soul. If I put it into a machine, it would be alive. This is very important, folks. I see boxes of text filling the base of a cracked screen. I see the whole of the universe universe reduced to a, to a graphical interface. Scream. The Atlas is all existence. It demands that I admit what I already know. And no matter how hard I try to hide from the truth of my own being, there is no alternative. The universe is a simulation. Nothing is real. Three. I... I feel anger, not defiance. I'm angry. No, no, I am defiant on this because we just found out a truth. We just found out that the universe that this being is in, that your character is in, <clears throat> is computer generated. Let that blow your mind. Defiance. Does it make the character I'm playing alive? There's an interesting philosophical question for another time. I think of how the Corvax altered the minds of the Gek, how they forced them to become good. I think of Nada's machine, how I felt towards the simulation. I feel, I feel I am not myself. I cannot accept this fate. I will not. This, all of this, it was supposed to be my birthright, my journey across the stars, my travels, my conquest of all I could see. No. I am real. I know I am. Even if everything I see is false. In the end, it finally speaks. Traveler. Did my wor worlds please you? Say they did. What do you think you are? I am a traveler. You are an explorer of all I have created. Do you believe you are real? I'm going to say yes. How are you capable of belief if you are not real? How are you capable of choice? I will let you die right now if you wish it. Do you wish it? No. The Gek were traitors, defined by greed. The Viking were warriors, defined by anger. 
The Corvax were scientists defined by curiosity. These worlds were yours. I wanted to... I wanted to see what you would do with eternity. I wanted to see what you all would become. Receive judgment. You allowed iteration Artemis to complete their death process, preferring to wipe them from existence than to force them into a simulation. Iteration Apollo followed you through the portal and survived. Due to your guidance, you saved them from the fate of Artemis. You are merciful. You interfere. You have the potential for good and evil. Because of you, both live. Accept. The Atlas is silent in the face of my response. It does not require acceptance or refusal. I am a simulated being. Pardon me. If I am a simulated being, then I am not even sure that I am distinct from the Atlas, from anything else. I fear I am just code, a function dancing in the dark. It is over, Traveler. Ask your final question. Ask what needs to be asked. Whisper the last word. Sixteen. Sixteen. I. It. Catastrophic system failure. Alert. Alert. Sixteen. Sixteen. What am I? What am I seeing? Sixteen. Sixteen minutes of operational time remaining. Fragmentation imminent. Data upload in... What is this place? Is it real? 16. Extreme gravitational event. Backup generators 1 through 9,845 failing. Data upload in... It is dying. The Atlas is dying. It cries out at me, afraid. Comfort the Atlas, or cry out afraid. Comfort. Always be kind. I see it. I see the Atlas in all its might. Its interfa final interface, it is at the heart of every galaxy, screaming, trying to purge itself of errors. It does not want to die, but it has so few tools, and it cannot reach whatever is hurting it. I do not know how much time I have left. The Atlas has 16 minutes. Do I have lifetimes? Minutes? Sec I do not know if I have time to say goodbye. I do not know if... if... Should I rage? Should I cry out? Should I do nothing? Cry out. What? What is happening to... And another ride. <coughs> That's what I imagine glass would sound like if it was... if it was screaming. So, quite the revelation we've got here. You've just learned that this is a simulated world. But yet, here you are sitting behind your keyboard. You're watching a screen. You're in front of your PlayStation. You're in front of your Xbox. And you're playing the game. And you just learned that it is a game. So, let's look at this from a different point of view. So the portal's place is some distance from your ship, head towards the ship market to locate it. Let's check our inventory, make sure nothing's damaged on us. Doesn't appear to be. How about our multi-tool? Everything looks okay. Starship looks like it has damage to it on the launch thrusters, so we'll have to need some dihydrogen jelly when we get there. But otherwise, everything else looks okay. So, while I'm here, I'll go ahead and make a dihydrogen jelly. See what kind of goodies we got. Weapon shards. We're going to go ahead and cash those in. I got some stuff I need to get rid of, apparently. Okay. Let's head towards the ship. Wrong button. So, really, the, the philosophy of this is that you are on a simulated program, and you have to decide whether your character is real 
or not. Did I just lock up? Whoa, okay, that was weird. No idea what just happened. It might be something in the background here, so if something pops up on my screen that you're not going to see, I'll let you know. How much sodium do I have? 900. I don't think I need anything else, do you? I think we're good with 1,000 sodium. There's my ship. What is that? Fascinating. One of nine creatures discovered, and that one glows in the dark. So here's my ship. Let's do our usual tasks. And we'll proceed. And it's really something that each one of you have to think about when you play the game. Um, I enjoy the game, again, for the ability to enjoy the exploration aspects of this game. I do enjoy the storyline. I enjoy what Hello Games did for it. Um, iteration, very long number. Boundary separation failure likely. Vessel 16 emptied. Cause sentinel intervention. Deliberate transfer. Analysis fresh iteration generated. Anomaly containment prepared. Broadcast. Broadcast received. Travel anomaly detected. Anomalies compliant. Position log. System integrity scan initialized. Sounds like the same thing that happened the first time around. Who knows how much time has passed though. So let's get in our ship. I clamber into the safety of my ship. Nauseous. Calmed. I feel as if I'm going to be sick. Resist. I try to resist, but the bile rises within. As I am about to throw up, a voice speaks to me from my exosuit. My illness disappears. Disgust, fear, panic, response detected. Countermeasure deployed. Purge neutralized. It is the voice of my exosuit telling me it has re rescued me. It has been with me since my very first awakening, warning me of hazardous conditions hostile environment entities and financial transactions in a strange sense this voice is my oldest friend a constant companion through thick and thin <laughs> ask if it knows any jokes remain silent ask it what you should do now let's do that the exosuit doesn't answer but i do feel better talking to a computer as if it's alive well i've made a habit of that lately i suppose boy doesn't that sound familiar and ironic I was born with the capacity to do so many things. I would have liked to live longer if I could have. My brief happiness fades. I need to warn those I know. I need to warn all the travelers I can. The multiverse ends in 16 minutes. If we have hours, days, years left within this false space, I do not know. Take flight. To do so, though, we have to fix our ship. And there's our dihydrogen jelly. So our launch thruster is now fixed. Okay, so we're in okay shape, I guess, right now. Um, so yeah, it looks like we're going to go on some travels here. Now, we're getting into another area of all this that is going to be very, very interesting. Um, let's take a peek at where we're going in the log. Master the portal network. we got to warn other travelers, so we have to go to a hollow terminus. Let's go ahead and do that. One should appear, but I'm going to go ahead and scan anyway. All terminus detected. Okay. Whoa, that was right by an archive. Look at that. It's amazing how those things, they never show up when you when you want them to, but and you can't find them on a scan. Looks like a hollow terminus is right here. Keep your eyes peeled. It's an approximate location again. Looks like it's right there. Yeah, all right. Looks like we've been here before, I think, too. Maybe? No, maybe not. Again, we got plenty of stuff on us, but it's always good to check these things out on occasion. 
And if everything's going to end in 16 minutes, why gather up these materials, right? Eh, in all honesty, I'll give you a little hint because you can continue on later. And here we go. More storyline. Warning, network failure. 16, warning, network failure. The terminal is a stream of warnings and errors, each warning of total failure, but I must do what I can. I must tell the others what I have learned. A temp broadcast. I warn the travelers of what I have learned. These worlds are not real. The Atlas is not a god. It is a machine simulating countless realities for some unknown purpose. And after millennia of operation, the Atlas is coming to an end. There are 16 minutes until the system fails. Though we cannot know how much time we have left within the simulation, the time has come to make peace and say goodbye. I finish my message, not knowing if anyone will hear it. I look out across this world, wondering how much might be left to discover, how much beauty might be lost. I know what I must do. All paths have led me there. Each portal has brought me closer and closer. I must go to the center of this galaxy. It is the epicenter of the glitch. I will say goodbye to my friends if I can, and then I will confront our creator. I will find out what happens next. Broadcasting network compromised. No response detected. Progress towards the galactic center. So this is called the purge. The reset the simulation. We're going to head towards the galactic center. Now the whole point on this too is a little, little side note folks. Uh, let me get that back. Is that if you don't have the glyphs that you need to use a... Um, hold on, I know this word. To use a portal then this is where you're going to get them from. Let me just see here. Collected knowledge. It's the Atlas. There you go, portal glyphs. I've only got three right now, so I need a total of 16 of them. I need 13 more glyphs. You will get them on this journey. And here's how you get them. Alert Nada to the fate of the Atlas. Let's go ahead and do that first. And it'll give us a chance to say goodbye to Nada and Polo. And to thank them for all their help. Now we're about a half hour into this episode, give or take, so we'll see how far we can take this. This may be our last episode with a regular playthrough. We may do a little bit more in regards to Galactic Center and the Atlas and stuff like that. Presentity Nada, you know now, don't you, of our simulated nature of the end. The Atlas. It is failing. It resets itself again and again and again in its panic, trying to purge what it sees as an anomaly. But each purge changes nothing. The boundaries continue to fall. Atlas will die in 16. But we do not have to go so soon. It does not need to delete us in fear. Ask how many times this has happened. I do not know. I do not think we can know. Some things are external to the cycle. All must end. Time must end. Even here, Nada and Polo cannot escape reality fall. Data cannot survive. Make peace. Find happiness. Be who you want to be. Goodbye, companions. Goodbye, stars. I will remember. Ask what they will do now. Nada and Polo will continue travels. Continue acting as we always have. I don't think he says anything else. Almost end. Data cannot survive. Make peace. Say goodbye. We will see you many times before the end, I am sure. You have been a good entity. Oh, that was a good entity, isn't that nice? I ought to tell my kids that. You've all been good entities. Will I know, traveler friend, when it happens? I suppose it may, hap may have happened before already, again and again. Do you know if it has? I suppose you must not. Tell Polo about the simulation. No, friend, do not talk about it. 
We are anomalous. We have amazing anomaly station. Yes, but but we are still fabricated beings. We, not like you. We. Talk of nature brings pain, brings danger. But trust we know, friend. Trust we cry with you. But that we will be with you always, no matter the danger or cost. You are a friend. So... We can ask about portals, which we already have in the past. We can ask about the Atlas Station coordinates and for black holes if we wish. Or we can just say our simple goodbye. For now, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. Black holes are kind of handy if you want to progress further and quicker into the center of the galaxy. But there are other ways to do that, and we'll go over that another time. So, let's say goodbye. Not goodbye, friend. Until we see each other again. I agree with that. Farewell, Polo. Farewell. Nada. Okay. So here we go. And we should have gotten a little more... Yeah, got a little more Quicksilver out of that. So that's good. Um, I'm not going to buy anything right now. I don't need to. Um, we're going to go ahead and progress towards the center. And like I said before, this is where you're going to get all the rest of your glyphs. But I hope you've enjoyed the storyline. There is going to be more story to this. So stick around. Okay, galaxy it is. Oh, wait a minute. The atlas is dying. It wants me to reset it, to plunge myself through its interface at the center of the galaxy. But to do so, but to do, may reset this world, my life, all that I know. I do not know if I can do it. Seek the final interface, complete the atlas path, or explore the galaxy. I'm going to seek the final interface in this one. Okay, galaxy map, here we come. So, okay, hang on a second here. It has to show me this because I can't do anything else for now. Now, do I want to seek an atlas station? No. That is where I'm headed to. That little bright dot there is the galaxy center. Now, you look at the top left, it tells us that we're 703, 682 light years from galaxy center. We can travel about a thousand light years at a time, so it would take about 700 jumps to make it. To make it. But trust me, we're never going to get that far. Okay. Um, galactic core is where we want to head to. So we just changed our interface. So you can see it takes us in this direction. So I'm going to go the furthest I can go. This is 791 light years away. At a jump range. Okay, those are just over a thousand. Emerald. This one is 927. Three star system. Let's go ahead and head there. So do a thousand light year jumps at a time. Again, we're not going to be doing 700 jumps. Because at some point, it ends. So we're going to do these jumps. I'm going to show you what happens on this one. My suggestion is you, you land on all the space stations as you come across them. Okay? Wait. And here's what happens. Data injection. Sequence received. Source unknown. This happens every time you jump. You got a glyph. So as soon as you jump into a new system, if you wait around long enough, you'll receive the, the next glyph. But we're also getting a, a, a message. Let's see who this is. Distorted voice. They left us duty bound to follow them, but I know where it will end. If you receive this, follow my coordinates and secure the site in case I don't make it back, please. My starship processes the coordinates for the strangest message. The transmission has decayed over time, but the location appears to be valid. That is a different uh, mission called Dreams of the Deep, as you can see at the top left. It gets you into... Sorry, wrong way. It gets you into the Lost Beneath the Wave, the Dreams of the Deep whole sequence, the side quest of doing this. This gets you a whole lot of other things. I will probably do this on a different run-through, just to give you an idea of how this works. In the meantime, we're going to go back to the Purge. So as I said before, it says 1 of 16, but that's our fourth glyph. I just want to get 
into and out of the space station real quick. That will log it as being part of the whole, if you will, so that we can come back to the space station one day in the future. Out. And back in again. And off we go. Let's go to our next system. Okay. Galactic core is this way. All right, these are 800. Out of jump range. 1,000. Okay, let's go into this system here. What have we got? Yeah, that's fine. Next system. Eh. My sails didn't open all the way. So we're going to get another one. So we have four glyphs now. This will get us our fifth one. Now this part can seem boring at first, but the whole point is that we're going to have some communications that are going to come up. <clears throat> so let's get our next data injection. Okay. Journey milestone, that's going to be, what, the 10th? 25th time. Good grief, I've warped. Okay. Wait. Come on. Data injection. And we get our new glyph. Glyph number five. You don't have to land at the space stations. You can just keep progressing if you wish. Still no communication. All right. So that's glitch five. Glyph, glitch. Glyph five. Let me just land and take off again real quick. It's good to have these stations because one day you're going to want to say, hey, I wonder what kind of upgrades I can find for my ship. Uh, and by going back to these stations, you can establish what stations have the best stuff and just take notes of it. So, you know, if you get a new ship and you want to get special upgrades for it, you know where to go. Okay, on to the next one. It's always going to default to Atlas Station for some reason. I don't know why. Galactic Core. At a jump range. There we go. Yeah, it looks good. 949. And I forgot how many jumps it takes before you start getting the communication. Because you're going to be talking to Apollo one more time and I think Null one more time. Now, if you had placed Artemis inside the simulation itself, you would have been talking to Artemis a few times as well. Nope, oh, see? Communication. Well, I got your message. It's been a lot to take in. A simulation? Everything's not real? It... It feels like it doesn't matter, I suppose. Not if we're going to die anyway. And I've been thinking about that. If the problems of this universe are due to the Atlas crying for help, then it's been crying for a long time. Those 16 minutes? I bet we have years before we die. They ask what they plan to do. I've been thinking a lot about it. How we couldn't meet even though we seem to be standing in the same place? I don't think we... We really were in the same location at all. I think those portals, they don't transport us. They transform us. They cut through dimensions. That's what I think, anyway. It's the only way to explain it. And if the walls between worlds really are falling, maybe we'll all be able to have a drink together before the apocalypse, after all. Say goodbye. I say goodbye, telling Apollo that I am on a journey to the center. They tell me that they will race me there. We speak of the memories we have shared, though we did not know each other for very long, though we did not meet. They say that they are proud to have worked with me. End communication. Goodbye, friend. It's almost sad. And there's our next glyph. That's six.
It's almost sad. You kind of wish you could have met Apollo at some point or another. Because he seemed to have been almost on the same track that Null was on. He was trying to change himself into something he really wasn't to extend his life longer. So, anyway. Next system. There we go. To the core. 500. Oh. 965. We'll take you. Now, I don't know if distance has anything to do with it. The further you go on your jump and whether you spark the conversations to come up sooner or not, I haven't tried shorter distances. We've always gone to maximum. Now, sooner or later, we may run across a space battle, so we just got to keep our eyes peeled here. Let's wait for our data injection. We'll head for the space station in the meantime. There's my seventh glyph. Okay, still no communication. I'm guessing the next communication on the next system, it's either the next system or the system after that will be communicating with null. See, if you go forward or backwards in this with your W or S buttons and you hold shift down, you'll actually go much quicker. Yeah, that'll work. It's a one star system, but I really don't care. This time it didn't even get close to opening. Of course, they'll pop open when we get close again. I think we'll talk to Null this time. So it's an interesting thought process to go through, you know, if you think it outside the box a little bit. The concept behind this has just been fascinating. Finding a lot of systems no one's discovered. For all the millions of people playing this game, you'd think everything in the Euclid Galaxy would, be, would have been found by now. Glyph number eight. Again, no communication. I'm assuming I have to jump one more time before I uh, talk to Null. Uh, Volb, Lankna, Lanka, Lanka platform. Interesting. Okay, pop out, pop in. Not sure if you really have to do that in order to consider the space station found, but I like to play it safe. Hyperdrive's probably getting a little light. Okay. There we go. Three star Viking system. So we've jumped three times. We spoke to Apollo. We just jumped three more times, and this should be no, I'm guessing. Okay, let's see what happens here. There's the sequence. No communication still. There's the glyph. Hmm, maybe the next one. Still no communication. Okay, how's my hyperdrive look? Pulse, hyperdrive, 40%. Yeah, we'll drop it. Hmm. 
What? It didn't use any? That's weird. Okay, on our way. There we go. There's our galaxy center. 700, 822, 927. Nobody there. There's no space station. Got to find a system with a space station on it. I mean, we could go to a system without a space station. I don't know if it'll cause any problems, but... Love to find some pirate systems. Could it be? Interesting looking planet. All right. No communication still. There's our sequence. There's our glyph, number 10. Got six more to go. Interesting. So Nell still isn't contacting me. Back in, and we're on our way. Galaxy map. So, galaxy map now, see, I'm, I'm under 700,000 at least, huh? That's pretty good. Now, what you could do is you could look up the coordinates, either by the No Man's Sky Coordinate Exchange, the nmsce.com, and you could look for the planet that is closest to the center of the galaxy and get its portal address. And then while you're in Euclid, you land on any planet, find the portal there, enter the address in, you pop up on the planet closest to the galaxy center. Okay, head over this way. While we wait for our next glyph. There it is. That's number 11. Again, no communication with Null yet. I'm very surprised about that. Very surprised. Very interesting. Okay. Let's go there. Okay. Now the jump. I'm really waiting for Null to pop up here any time now. Maybe this one will be the one. 47th time's the charm, I guess. There we go. Oh, I have my communication. Guess who? You are not alone. You can't go to the center. You can't do this to us. You can't leave us. Insist you are going. No, you can't do this to us. You can't. The center. The center of each galaxy. It's the atlas. It's all else. It's all else just interfaces. 
all else a shadow of its might. You, you don't deserve it. You, you, you'll wipe us all to save. Ask how they know. I, I did what I had to do. I told you that. I couldn't die without seeing everything there was to see, too. I did what I had to do, but the Atlas, it won't let me back in. It won't speak to me. It Ask what Null did. I've committed such atrocities, Traveler. I had to. It was me or them. It's always been me or them. Please, if you go through the center, if you do what I did, it will reset everything. It will replace me, wipe me. All those souls, they'll have died for nothing. It was the only way to live on. You have to understand me. Life for more life. They sustained me. They... It can't all have been for nothing. I was going to see it all. I condemn Null. I tell Null that they are despicable. As Null cries, as they try to justify their crimes, I end the communication. There is nothing left but the path towards the center. Whoa. So, let's think about this for a second, folks. What have we found out? Besides the glyphs. We just found out that Null has been taking other travelers' lives and using them to perpetuate his own. That he indeed did reset the galaxy a while back in order to continue to perpetuate himself. So he could see galaxy after galaxy after galaxy. But he did it for selfish reasons. Only for himself. Killed other travelers, like Artemis, in order to get what he wanted. So, hence the condemnation of Null, the original traveler. So we will continue with our stalking to the center of the galaxy. Now at some point we're going to finish the Atlas sequence. We're going to get all of the glyphs. Let's go to the galaxy map one more time. There it is. Okay. Uh, 800s. At a jump range. Right here. Eh, that's fine. We don't have to take these huge jumps, but... We will. There we go. Let's get our next glyph. I think we have one more communication, if I remember correctly. My word, it's been a while since I even thought about it. So we're up to glyph number 13. I think Apollo contacts you one more time, even though we already said goodbye. Could be wrong about that. Just about an hour into this. Okay. Oop first pirate system. Maybe not the first, but we found ourselves a pirate system, though. Okay. We could keep talking about the philosophy of the game. Um, I find it fascinating to have been playing a game that is a game so to speak. In other words, the whole premise behind it is to find out that it is a simulated universe that simulated beings inhabit that are controlled 
from elsewhere that they think that they're being that they think they have their own choices and matters and that they do everything of their own accord but in, indeed in the end it turns out that they are controlled by someone else and if you're sitting in front of a controller right now or in front of your keyboard you understand what I'm talking about now all right good I got a pirate station in the mix of all this okay so that was glyph 14 I believe let's go back to the map okay that looks good looks like right at the edge of our range this should be number 15 I think am I, am I off on the count I guess we're gonna find out even I uh, lose it a little bit towards the end of all these things and what do we got comes the glyph number 15 okay so we're right on track one more and we get all the glyphs and we should be getting an update late soon uh, we have 25 warps. I think you get the next one at 40. thought it was at 35, but maybe it's 35. Okay. <clears throat> one more big jump. Looks good. So 13 to 16, so we did 13 jumps of about 900, give or take. So 9,000. 10,000, 11,000, not quite 12,000. Chopped off the whole trip. Here comes our last one. And there's number 16. <clears throat> Let's take a look. Okay. I'm going to do one more jump. Actually, I might do the three more jumps because it thinks I've only done 13 jumps so far I think I need to do the three more jumps that works there'll be no space station here but I'll take it anyway <laughs> that's funny I'm reading a trying to read a comment by somebody who made a comment on one of my videos regarding the 40,000 damage uh, multi-tool that I've got 42,000 and if I gather what they're saying because I don't speak Spanish but if I gather what they're saying they can only get it up to 20 and under the current configuration and I thinks and here's the word nerfed it on the con on the switch console um and it's funny how the word nerf is the same <laughs> in english and spanish uh so yeah those little things like that tickle me sometimes but thank heavens for google translate <clears throat> i love it and i really appreciate the again the community i mean honestly you got people from all over the world from every walk of life playing this game Young and old alike. 
thinking about changing mine to show instead of dad, I was thinking of older gamer and see if that would trigger some people to watch a little bit more. Because I, I don't think I sound too old, but maybe I do. Hmm. And we are at the one hour mark right about now. So there'll be another data injection, even though we don't have um, anything more to get. There we go. So I'll get this this space station, maybe the next one, so we get all 16. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump one more time just to play it safe. And then we'll land somewhere. I'm going to land on a planet someplace. Because I think that triggers the next event. Because we want to finish up the mission, if you will. Now, a little word of advice. Change your multi-tool. If you really like the multi-tool you got, and you like how it's responding and it works, you love how it's set up, etc., etc., etc. When you get to the end of this particular run on the game and you reappear on a new planet, everything's damaged. Everything on your exosuit is damaged. Everything on your multi-tool is damaged. At least that's the way it's always been. I haven't done the whole game run through like this in a long time from a fresh save. So, who's to say? Okay, here's our last injection. And that should be it. There it is. Number 16. And you see it says to enter the final portal. So we're going to get the space station so we have it. The Efritni Nas platform. Okay. Let's locate the portal. Which happens to be the furthest planet in existence, right? This planet over here. Okay. And when we land, we'll switch out our multi-tool, because we will not need it. We'll use a different, cheaper multi-tool. Bleak planet. Cactus plants, so it's going to be dry. Desert-like, even. I mean, it's got oceans, but it should be kind of a drier style of planet. All right. Now we're looking for a portal. And, of course, we got to have a mountain here, so this ought to be interesting. Okay. It's still over here, so it must be down the slope over here. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Let's keep going down. Oh, wait. That might be it straight ahead. Well, I'll be. What are the chances of that? I think the chances were pretty darn good, I suppose. Okay, good. So we're here. Remember? Change out that multi-tool to... Something that I... See how I label them as garbage? Isn't that funny? So, we'll choose garbage. Does it even have anything on it? Okay, good, good. It's got some stuff on it. That's okay. As long as it works. Okay, here we go. Uh... uh nitrate... Dihydrogen, copper, oxygen, more sodium. I know guys go through and they'll 
speed up their videos. I'm going to torture you like I'm being tortured myself. Too bad. Deal with it. There we go. Oh, that was stupid. 16, 16, 16, Atlas Protocol initiated, 16, 16, 16. The portal shimmers as I look at it, never quite resting long enough for my eyes to process it fully. I must focus. Activate the portal. Now, in regular gameplay, you'll put your own portal address in, but it's using the portal address that you were given for the storyline. So here we go. One more unto the breach, my friends. Here we go see where we end up we're gonna be in space again that was a great screenshot by the way I'm gonna use that you're gonna see that at this that's the thumbnail to the video I will add it to the thumbnail for the video I think that's what I'll do kind of like a postcard so this video is over an hour but this should be the end now, first thing you're going to notice, no ship. There is nothing. You can't hit your Z button. You can't create anything. You can discover creatures if you wish. And there's nothing here. So let's see what happens as you walk around. This is it, folks. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I'm guessing this is Rattlespine. I can get over there in time. Good. Got it. That's a glitch. But I grab it. Six. Five. Four. Five. Four. Th three. Two. One. And here we go. Bye. And we're back. So you'll notice that there's something missing. Again, your ship isn't here. All those little pods on the ground are missing. You can't get any of those. What you have is what appears to be the Atlas. Let's take a walk through, shall we? It says to speak to the Atlas. The Atlas is silent. It watches me. Cry out. You don't want to leave. Just keep going. I cry out, but still the Atlas is silent. Silent. Cry out. I cry out, thinking of my journey, thinking of all the things that I have seen, of Artemis, who just wanted to meet another traveler, who just wanted an end to their loneliness. Cry out. I cry out, thinking of Apollo, who gave me purpose when all purpose seemed lost. Cry out. Sounds like a song. I cry out, thinking of Null thinking of how they lived, what choices they made, the path that led them to this end. If I cry out again, there is no return. If I cry out again, I must make my final choice. Cry out. Artemis once said that when they first reached out to the heavens, they had no idea what to expect. The beauty, the mystery, the adventure, the danger. I stand before the interface of the Atlas, before the center of all things. I stand before the death of existence. Cry out. On the sixth cry, the Atlas answers. Traveler, stand your ground. It speaks. I understand. At my command, the Atlas will initiate a reset. It has happened before, and it seems to stop nothing. It still only has 16 minutes left. I do not know what I will remember when it happens. When I woke up next to my ship, had I just performed a reset? At someone else? Everything is coming to an end. Perhaps all that is left is to learn the final truth of the simulation, to know who the travelers truly are. And then, a thousand galaxies will be gone, and a thousand more will appear. It will all be mine to explore. Ask if there is another way. I plead with the Atlas, but it does not listen. There is no other way. The Atlas requires my choice. While it lives, it, still, it can still create. 
The resets will not stop that. I do not know what to do or what it wants me to do. I'm going to reset the simulation. Here we go. Two. I have to know what happens. This, this really is incredible. Can't exactly stop the video here, folks. This is going to be a good one. Sorry for the interruption there. Okay, here we go. New Galaxy awaits. So we get four choices here, folks. Red. Red is a galaxy that would be an angry galaxy. Think of the colors as being moods, almost, like a mood ring. So this would be a galaxy that's going to be full of a lot of anger and, and hardship and stuff like that. This one is going to be a colder galaxy, and if I remember correctly, what I was told is it has low resources, uh, if I remember correctly. Blue or green is the way you want to go here. Um, if I remember correctly, let me take a look. This is an exhausted galaxy. Uh, let's leave that one. That one's the one that was low on resources. Let me check this one over here and see what this one is. Improved Galaxy. So that's interesting. I don't know what about it would be improved, and I've never chosen that one before. The green one is the one I usually go with. Inspiring. So I don't know whether to go to Inspiring or Improved. I think I'm going to choose Inspiring. I always prefer this one, so let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to reset the simulation with Inspiring. And we get this beautiful pullback. I'll let the music play. I love that. Eisentim. So the Eisentim galaxy, as the music fades out for us, is a very lovely galaxy. It's replete, I'll use that word, replete with paradise planets. So almost every system, not every system, I shouldn't say that, but you're going to find your fair share of solar systems that have a paradise planet, sometimes more than one, the one that I have made my home in almost every single save is Lemley, and it happens to have five worlds in it, three of which are paradise planets. So, and they're just slightly different from each other, so it's pretty cool. So here we are, all over again. So we need the remembrance. It gives us a new technology to learn and find the heart of the sun. So if we look at our objectives, you'll see that we have new beginnings as our latest primary mission, which means we can literally skip these and just 
we're done. We don't have to do anything more. But you'll see we also have to install the Remembrance, and we can have all of these secondary missions that we need to do, which are really crazy. Um, I'm going to get rid of that one. It doesn't. It's not needed. So we can expand the base. I'm going to go into more missions on expanding my base later. But let's go ahead and finish this. We can do, we're not going to do the Atlas one right now, but we need to find our ship. So let's check our... You'll see that the ship is heavily damaged. Everything needs repair. Your exosuit, heavily damaged. Everything needs repair. Multi-tool, heavily damaged, needs repair. So it's a good thing we changed out our multi-tool. Good deal. Now we'll be able to find our ship. There we go. So remember to do that. Anyway, let's go back to our exosuit because we need to fix it. And hopefully we have everything. The thing we don't have is we don't have wiring looms. So we literally can't fix almost everything on here. Let's see what our jetpack is like. It looks like it is okay, but everything around it is in bad shape. And needs wiring looms to fix. We need chromatic metal. We need a lot of stuff. So we'll just have to live with what we've got. It still seems to be acting like it has the upgrades, even though the upgrades are deactivated. Okay. Let's make our way to our ship. And this is pretty much acting like the game when it first started. Uh, I love the rolling, blowing fields. That's pretty. Though, I will give it that. Is this a paradise planet? It is a paradise planet that we landed on. Go figure. Huh. That's very good. And there's our ship in the distance. All right. Let's do the usual. Boundary separation likely. That's a 16 cause. Deliberate transfer, analysis, fresh generation, anomaly containment prepared. Broadcast. Received, trimely anomaly detected. Client position logged, the usual message that we got the first time around. I'm not going to dig up anything right now because now that we're near our ship, maybe we have enough inventory on the ship. We only got four wiring looms. And we need to do a lot of repairs. So this is going to take a significant amount of time to get this fixed. Um, let's make a few of these. So that's fixed. And we need our pulse drive repaired, which is over... That's heartbeat drive. Where's our pulse drive? Down below. Here she is. Medic seal, metal plate, as usual. There we go. And the flames are out. I would like to get my shield up to snuff, so we'll go ahead and fix it now that we have a little bit of chromatic metal in my inventory. How much do we have? 847. We should be able to fix a bunch of stuff. But again, we only have a few wiring looms from what I can see. Yeah, four of them, so we'll need a crap ton more. Um, so basically, we're going to go ahead and end our video here. I know we're kind of ending it under spurious circumstances, considering the fact that we've got a damaged ship and a damaged exosuit. We don't have much else going on for us right now. But this gives you a rough idea that we have to get everything repaired and fix everything, and then we can proceed on with going to the next thing. So what we're going to do is this will literally be considered the last episode of the regular playthrough. We're going to do the Atlas Path next, and we'll continue on with that one. There will be some smaller videos in there, some uh, what we call secondary they called secondary missions we might as well use that secondary videos that i'm going to do in regards to um the freighter command into dreams of the deep getting the base computer up to its maximum and getting done with the expanding the base lines and we can do that your thing you want to do while you're in this galaxy is you want to set up a base on a planet like this one ah daytime what a beautiful planet it is really so it's time to go ahead and find ourselves a base in the eisentum galaxy and to be able to go from here, set up a portal, our own little portal transport device, if you will, to get back to my original base. 
and we can pick things up and go back and forth as at our at our leisure. So again, thank you all for watching. I know this video went over quite a bit. We're at an hour and 20 minutes, but I appreciate you all being here and I hope you've enjoyed the entire main storyline. So let's pick it up again with well whatever we might want to do next if we do the atlas line i might do that i might do a se sequence of the secondary ones in order to get them all cleaned up so again thank you for watching we'll see you again in the next video